This is Treat You Better from Fun Time Piano Hits, level 3A, 3B. This is arranged for early intermediate level piano. First, I'm gonna play this at performance tempo, and then I'm going to give you some practice tips, including how you can change the rhythm a little bit to sound slightly more like the original. That is Treat You Better, arranged for early intermediate piano. Um, this arrangement, I think, sounds great. Uh, I think the Fabers did a great job here. Uh, a couple things I want to talk about first right off the bat are just the basics, the key signature. There are no sharps and flats in the key signature, and so we're either in A minor or C major. In this case, definitely A minor. The final chord of the piece is an A minor chord. Uh, the first chord of the piece is also an A minor chord. It's just broken up. Here's the A, the C, and the E right there. And um, it definitely has that minor tonality. So A minor is the key we're in. Time signature is 4-4. Four, four four beats in a measure and the quarter note gets one beat. Um, now something going on with the rhythm in this piece is syncopation. There's a lot of syncopation. It's the sound right off the bat you hear at the beginning, one and two and three and four and. So jumping in, a, a beat jumping in on the and after I say the word two, one and two and three and four and. It's it's from an eighth note tied to a quarter note in both hands, and that creates a syncopated feeling which makes this kind of driving, kind of jumping in, um, excited, um, a little anticipatory, kind of a rhythmic feel that is popular in a lot of pop and country, blues, jazz songs, and it, um, I don't know, it just creates like a, a kind of this excited excitement in the song and um, definitely fitting for this piece. Now, when you listen to the original recording, the syncopation is probably not something that's gonna jump out at you as a feature of it. I think in the original recording, it's more of an underlying kind of a, a rhythmic feature, and it's definitely there, but it's more in the background. So here, you know, the Fabers are writing it into this arrangement because it's a cool effect, and it's something that's pretty easy to do on the piano to play this syncopation. As long as you can count it and really feel the steady pulse, you'll be able to handle that. So when the singing part starts in the verse, uh, this part, I won't lie to you, right? The vocal line 
is in the right hand, that's just sustained. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But the left hand keeps the syncopation. I think that sounds great. The left hand has the accompaniment. It's keeping that driving rhythmic force in the arrangement in the song while the right hand is handling the melody line or the vocal line. Um, so that all sounds really good. Now, when you get to the chorus, this part, I know I can treat you better, right? Both hands are written in syncopated rhythm right here, but um, the original recording, Sean Mendes does not sing the chorus in this syncopated fashion. He sings the chorus um, just straight. I know I can treat you better. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Not um, the way the rhythm is written in this particular arrangement. So I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm also not saying that the Fabers didn't notice that. I'm sure they did, but um, they probably wanted to keep both hands playing the same syncopation in this arrangement for a couple reasons. One of them um, being just ease of learning and another maybe being um, not introducing too, too much difficulty at this level. We're level 3A, 3B here and um, taking the syncopation out of one hand and keeping it in the other hand might have been something they would only do for level four or level five. I'm not sure, but that's a guess I have. So um, I would like to play the right hand melody the way Shawn Mendes sang it and keep the syncopation in the left hand, and I think I can do that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go, I know I can one and two and three and four and one and two and three and Keep the left hand syncopated. And I'm gonna flatten out the rhythm in the right hand so it's not syncopated. So it will be, I know I can one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And that'll sound more like the original. I know I can treat you better than he can and any girl like you sounds a lot better. Plus, I like the interplay of the syncopation here and the regular straight rhythm here. It just sounds a lot fuller, uh, more challenging for sure, more, um, you know, it sounds closer to the original and I like it. And I can do it, so I'm gonna do it that way. If you feel like you're up to the challenge, I think you should try it. Just start out slowly. it a bunch and then bring it up to tempo gradually and you're off to the races. It should sound awesome. Now, of course, if you're playing this as an assignment, if you're going to get a grade on it, if your teacher wants you to only play it as written for whatever reason, I'm sure he or she has a very good reason if they want you to stick with it as written. Um, just do, do what works best for you in that case. Do what they're asking you to do. But if you're only playing this for um, personal enjoyment, fun, recreation, or just to try to get better at playing pop songs on piano, you know, sometimes um, the arrangement isn't quite lined up with the original and you can figure out a way to make it much more like the original without having to do rocket science on it. This is a great example of that, so I would go ahead and do it. Another thing I would say about this piece is you want to keep a really light touch with your right hand. The vocal melody is uh, comes out, it, it's pretty rapid, you know, the words come out very quickly um, most of the time. And so you have a lot of uh, repeated eighth notes in succession. And if you play them too heavily, they're just gonna come out kind of plotty and too um, thumping and, and maybe too obnoxious actually for your listeners. So you don't wanna play like this. playing those notes as loud as I can, as hard, as much pressure as I can, and they're just coming out like a, just a bunch of sort of messy notes. So keep a light touch. You do not have to play these as loud as possible. It's only marked mezzo piano here anyway, so honestly, if you're following the dynamic marks, you will have a light touch and it'll stay really nice, nice and uh, listenable, I would say. 
Um, other than that, make sure you're following the petal markings. There is a lot of petal, but there are a lot, also a lot of places that don't have petal, and that's really important because we've gotta keep clearing out that petal to make room for the new chords, and the chords change quickly. So you don't want too many chords piling up on top of each other. In addition to that rapid vocal melody line, it just turns into a mess. So um, one of the ways you can get it to sound clean when you're performing is the light touch, and another way is to really observe and work the petal markings as written. Um, I think they're super important. So that's about it for this piece. It's pretty simple. I really love it. I hope you give it a try. Uh, thanks again for watching. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks a lot.